Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, and I'm the host of Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter, the podcast. But you should already know that because I'm pretty sure you're already subscribed to this channel. And if you're not, you should probably hit that subscribe button right now because I got lots of good tea to spill. I figured since I'm reading all of these Bravo books already, all these reality TV books, I'm reading Margaret Joseph's book, I just finished Lala Ken's book, I'm now reading The Housewives by Brian Moylan. Um, I figured why not just like start reviewing them? So today we're going to be reviewing Lala Ken's Give them la la. And let me tell you, in this book, she gives us all the la la. There will be spoilers ahead. I'll warn you before we get there. We'll do like general analysis and then we'll dive into like all the spoiler tea stuff. I know people say not to judge a book by its cover, but like that's what we do all the time. It's like knocking on Jax Taylor's head. Consumers love marketing and that's why we buy stuff. We don't buy it because it's ugly. We buy it because it looks attractive. And let me just tell you, Lala Ken on this cover, it looks very, very attractive. Gorgeous. I don't know if it's the most relatable, but it's definitely, it's very aspirational. On the back cover, look at that. I want to look like that. I want to wear all leather like that. Was she pregnant here? I don't know if I love her hair on the back cover, but on the front cover, fire, gold. I mean, if I saw this on the shelf, I would buy it. Sign me up. I'd probably hit that too if Lala wanted a threesome. I would even do Randall if, you know, she wanted me to. But I better get a PJ out of it. I've read a lot of reality TV books. I read a lot of celeb books, but I have to say this one was pretty meaty in terms of like what we actually get. We get a lot of really good, well-written stories. I guess well-written is a loosely used term because the bar is pretty low with reality stars, but like overall, I thought the book was done really well. It's very detailed. We have some really good juicy stories in it, which I appreciated. So we start off with getting into Lala's hoe face. That's literally how we open the book is talking about her hoe face, which is, a, is an interesting choice, but like, are we really surprised coming from Lala Can? Like, this is what we saw of her on Vanderpump Rules when she first came onto the show. So, not that shocking. When I interviewed her on the podcast, I was like, has Randall read this book? Because she like literally goes into detail about her sex life, which you kind of got to appreciate. Everyone's like, I'm sex positive, but like, what does that actually mean? I think Lala personifies that greatly in the book because she like very freely, openly talks about being slut shamed and just kind of owning her sexuality, owning her body. She even has condoms ready, like at her apartment prior to dating Randall. She obviously doesn't have condoms at her apartment now because she has like a home and a baby with Randall, duh. I don't know how many times I've been to like dudes apartments and they're like, oh, I don't have a condo. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're not doing this. Thank you, next. Hashtag safe sex. She also talks about her relationship with Randall a lot in the book, how they met, like the backstory, when the girls were, were like questioning her on Vanderpump Rules and calling her a hoe and saying that she was giving BJs for PJs, which I mean, she's owned up to at this point. But like, aside from, getting the superficial like sex relationship stuff. We get really deep when she talks about grief. She talks about the passing of her father and what he actually meant to her, which going through my own grieving, grieving process, I really appreciated that. She talks a lot about addiction. Again, I'll get into the spoilers a little bit later because I, if you just want to read the book, this is my overall review. Even her relationship with Randall is like put on full display and they have a much different relationship than I was expecting. Like you get that raw, edgy Lala that we had at the beginning of Vanderpump Rules and then you get like the hardcore Lala that we got after she lost her father and was like all up in Raquel's face and Billy's face and like ready to tackle somebody. But you also get like a lot more of the human side of Lala. And she talks a lot about being Lauren. We know the persona of Lala and she talks about that in the book. She actually compares it to uh, Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, which, but I did ask her about that and she clarified that she's not trying to compare herself to Beyonce. And she talks about like how, you know, Lauren is somebody special that only her intimate close group knit gets to really see. And Lala is the character we've all come to see on Vanderpump Rules. Okay, now let's get into the juicy parts of the book. There are spoilers, so just prepare yourself. If you don't want the spoilers and you want to go buy the book, go buy the book and come back. Until then, you can hit the subscribe button because you're gonna wanna stay up to date with me because I'm cute and I'm single. First tidbit of, of information that I thought was interesting is Lala actually worked at Sir prior to joining Vanderpump Rules. Before there was even a Vanderpump Rules show, she worked there temporarily, which I found a bit interesting. She didn't mention Lisa Vanderpump. I think she mentions Guillermo in the book. Um, so I don't know if this was prior to Lisa even becoming involved at Sir because I believe Sir was an already established 
restaurant before Lisa came in and then they like revamped it into the sir we all know today if I'm not mistaken. So she talks about how she used to work there when she came to Los Angeles for a quick blip before moving back to Utah and then moving back to Los Angeles, which is where she ended up landing a role on Vanderpump Rules. Fun fact. She also was there the night that Stassi and Jax met each other, which as we know, OG Vanderpump Rules, early seasons, Stassi and Jax relationship was just like fire and ice and it was everything we wanted to watch on our television screens. And so, very here for it. Now, when I tell you that she does talk about her relationship with Randall though, like we get into the nitty gritty of that and we get into like some of the fights that she had. And this is more so when she's talking about her addiction to alcohol and you know, how she would get blackout drunk and how most of the time she was blackout drunk. Even when filming Vanderpump Rules, she talks about how she would, before getting on camera, she would go next door to Tortilla Republic, sneak a couple margaritas and then go and film the show at Cirque right next to each other, which I actually used to like to tear up like that was a really good spot and I'm sad that they're gone. So she actually gets into the details of the fight. Like one time the cops had to be called and like came to their apartment, or sorry, not their apartment, one time the cops were called and had to actually come to their hotel room and be like, oh, is everything fine? And she's like, oh yeah, we just like really wild sex, even though they were just like screaming at each other. Like I did not realize their relationship was this like, crazy and that they would get into fights to this extent. She even talks about how one time she got into a fight and she was locked out and she broke through, you know, those sliding doors. There was one that had hurricane proof glass and she took off her Louboutin and just like smashed in the glass until she finally made it in. And then she just like went up and went to bed and woke up the next morning and didn't even remember that that had even happened. And Randall was like, yo girl, you're tripping. And I'm surprised that Randall actually stayed with her through all of this. The really intense part Part, though I mean obviously breaking the hurricane proof glass, glass is intense but I think the other really intense part is after they got into a fight she got his toothbrush and she put it in her booty hole and like swirled it around up there and then put it back on the counter and then he went and brushed his teeth and how he didn't taste ass maybe he just thought it was his bad breath but like that gives ass meaning a whole new taste and that's not the kind of ass well, I don't like to eat ass anyway, so that joke doesn't even work. But like, that's not how I want somebody eating my ass. Overall, I would say I give the book an eight out of 10. There's a lot of me. It's a really fun read. You're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna learn things about the show. So like if you're a Vanderpump fan, you're gonna learn a lot of like the behind the scenes mechanics of the show and like some of the scenes that we watched on the show, especially like when she started dating Randall, when she first joined the show. James, she talks about Watch What Happens Live and how they actually ended up getting banned from Watch What Happens Live because they were so drunk when they did the show the first time. And then she talks about coming back on to Watch What Happens Live. So there are a lot of like those good juicy stories that as a Vanderpump Rules fan, you'll really appreciate. I've had moments where I've loved Lala and I've had moments where I've hated Lala on the show. And now I think I have just a different understanding of who she actually is. And obviously when you're watching a reality show, you don't get a full picture scope of like who a person is. You need multiple seasons. And even then sometimes people go through stuff on camera that they don't actually show us who they are because you're sharing this platform with all these other people and you have to stay focused on the storyline and not the individual characters. It's well written, it's fun, it was fun to read, lots of good juice and tea, um, lots of tidbits that I didn't know that I just appreciated. And a lots of lots of like things that you could connect on, whether it's addiction, knowing somebody with addiction, grief, like I was able to relate on those like heavier, meatier topics of the book that I think really humanized her in a different way. Kristen's book, I would probably give it maybe like a 6.5, maybe seven. It was good, it was fun, it was enjoy enjoyable, it was palatable. A lot of the stories, we had already seen them play out on Vanderpump Rules, which was the only thing, like there were a lot of like meeting Bumble Guy, which was obviously Carter, or dating Tom Sandoval, which again, we saw all of this stuff play out on the actual show, Tom and Ariana and Miami Girl. Like all of those are just kind of retold that it had to be somebody that's either a new newer subscriber to Vanderpump Rules or someone that likes Kristen but isn't actually familiar with the show. I think would really enjoy that book a lot more. I like that it's about dating and that there were a lot of good like tangible takeaways. 
but it wasn't like a knockout eight or nine out of 10, but it was a fun read. Same thing with Stassi's book. Stassi's book, I think I would give that maybe a six out of 10. I think as a reality star, she performs really well. She's funny, she's witty. That's why she was a great podcaster. Something you can read on a beach day with the margarita and kind of just enjoy it. There's not a lot of meat to it. There's not a lot of depth to it, but again, it's called Next Level Basic. I don't think the intention was to have any meat or depth to that book. I think it served its purpose. It was a fun read. It was a fun bonding tool for her and her fans, her and her podcast listeners, that I think it definitely achieved what it set out to accomplish. Lala's book, on the other hand, I think it's overall a much better read. So I would give it eight out of 10, would recommend. I'm Zach Peter. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. Follow my podcast at No Filter with Zach. You can definitely subscribe here. There's always juice. There's always tea to be spilled. I've got lots of good insider dish and scoop. So be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification button. It's always a good time here. Weigh in in the comments too, because like, let me know if you like this review, if you read the book and you disagree with me, or you read the book and you definitely agree with me. I'm also reading Caviar Dreams by Margaret Joseph. I'm also reading The Housewives by Brian Moylan. I'll probably do reviews for those as well if you actually like this review. And then I just started listening to The Pretty Mess by Erica Jane, which is her book that she wrote a few years ago. I'm listening to the audiobook of it now and taking notes and kind of using, I'm building my own personal compare and contrast to like what the book said and what the show, what we're watching on the show of her relationship right now on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So I'll definitely do a video about that in the coming weeks. So hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, hit the bell for notifications because you're gonna want me right up in your notifications so that you're always up to date with the tea. And please subscribe to hashtag no filter with Zach Peter on all podcast platforms. The audio gives you full unfiltered access to all of our episodes. We release them twice weekly. It's always a good time. And please leave me a five star review if you haven't already because I am a millennial and I do love that validation. All right guys, love you, mean it.